there is social justice, right? Okay. So, uh, if we look at the concept of CDA, we can already see the vocation to pick a fight for social justice, right? And sometimes the way we do it, and in our critics from, for example, conversational analysis, say we are too concerned about the bad side, the dark side of the force, right? Uh, but if you look at the concept, we, we will see that CDA is not a method, right? So it's more about the ontological positioning of the researcher. So the focus, it's not about the methodological design in itself, but it's about what can we do with different methods that we draw from different areas to approach this problem. So I would say that fight for, uh, for, for social justice, fight for equality, for fairness in, in many levels, it's the, the main objective, regardless of what kind of tool, methodological tool you're using to achieve that objective, right? And, and again, and reading other authors from CDA, I would say that the assumption that, uh, that the positionality of the researchers is essential to carry out this, this uh, fight for justice and inequality as well. And uh, you can see an example there. Uh, some of our friends have been analyzing ads in Brazil, and this one came out on the Black Consciousness Day in November, November 20th. And it's quite outrageous like that, the reaction of people and how linguists treat the ads uh, in the Brazilian context. And we can see black is beautiful, but with toilet paper, really? What kind of, you know, uh, homage is that on Black, uh, black Consciousness Day? So I would say that the CDA ultimate goals are pretty much connected to social justice. Because uh, researchers are so concerned about questioning and then uh, questioning sense of critique here. And I know there are other uh, meanings, there are other conceptions of critique and I will come to them in a minute. Uh, it's to question those imbalances in order to envision social change. That's why I was uh, uh, emphasizing yesterday that sometimes we tend to, you know, stay in our offices in front of our computers. And what about the change that our research produces, right? Or it is just about the scholar, Google Scholar quotations and citations index, right? Uh, so if you also uh, take a look at other conceptions of CDA coming from you know, the old school, the founding fathers of CDA like Kress and Fowler, Horkheimer and Fekluck, of course, you will see that sometimes uh, CDA scholars are seen as activists as well, not just as scientists. And that can be criticized a lot by people from outside. So you have to pick your, your, your role. Either you are an activist or a researcher. So in which, in which ways those two roles can conflict with each other sometimes? It, it's not easy. And uh, in other instances, we can see researchers being proud of assuming their positionality, saying, no, I am here and I'm, I pick a side, which is the side of the oppressed. But the problem is that oppression is not black and white, right? We have the bad and the evil. There are several degrees in a spectrum, and to explore these degrees is not really easy an easy task. And you can see there another example in which people themselves respond and then of course the other brands will, you know, take a ride in the movement to, you know, make some profit. They try to make a homage for, for women in South Africa and that went sour. So, and then the linguists and people start analyzing how ads can, of course, further reproduce injustices. And of course, that requires a lot of uncomfortable uh, inter interdisciplinary work because CDA is not a method, so we need methodological tools. We do have a method, people, <laughs> but we borrow from other areas. And of course, we shape our own way in our own design to pursue our uh, endeavor of fighting for justice. But if we look to the origins of CDA, we will see that this, in, this impetus for fighting for justice is already there in the, in the way CDA is born, in the sense of, of critique, right? So if you look at the first, uh, I know, all white male European men, that's already a problem. And you have to be, you know, do this self-critique in CDA. And we can, can we really like fight for justice, you know, following the same Eurocentric, uh, and, you know, theoretical tools and all of that? But we'll come uh, back to that in a minute. 
So if you look at the, the, the first, one of the first essays by Hor Carmen, he says that it's necessary to understand society and then transform it. And this word is really key, transform it. You can't transform something that is good, that is perfect, that is working just fine. You might want to expand the benefits, the benefits of that system. So I think that there's the seed to fight the status quo, to, to bring the establishment down and say this is not right, something is wrong. And maybe that's why we are so focused on the dark side of the force, because we see that, you know, people, the world is a very cold and dark place, and we need to unveil those connections that, you know, keep reproducing these this different levels of oppression. And then if we look at the, the pillars, the columns, the key concepts in CDA, you will see that the seeds for fight, to fight social justice are also there. Look at the concepts of critique, which is key in CDA by Fequa. Make visible the interconnectedness of things. And you don't hide what is good, right? What is good is to be shown. What is more, I mean better, let's put it in a spectrum. So if you want to unveil something, it's probably because it's something that is harmful, that is, you know, it's, it's in there, it's hidden, and you need to bring it out. If you look at uh, Jäger and Meyer, they say uh, the critique in CDA is to question and criticize these courses, which is even stronger. But then Voda comes with Rysko and say, no, it's distance from the data. That's what critique means. But then if you look at Van Dyck, who has been working with this for more than 40 years, he would like clearly say, you know, in CDA, it's about being committed to social, it's his words, this is not paraphrase, uh, paraphrasing, to social justice and equality. That's the objective of CDA. And I, I don't see anything that is clearer than this, than this conception. And if you look at the, the conception of ideology, for example, partisan representation, ah, uh, practices that operate to the advantage of a particular social group, you will see words like advantage and partisan, you will see there is a struggle there. And then CDA is concerned about those struggles for power and how the exercise of power is redistributed into different social groups. If there is struggle, if there is fight, there is inequality, especially the, minor, the minorities, the more vulnerable groups will suffer in that struggle because they don't have the same resources, they don't have the same power to fight back. And of course, since CDA is not a method, we have to branch it out and then to research, even to our critics from our conversational analysis. And then you have different spectrums that go from more detailed linguistics analysis, which is more connected to the concreteness of the data and the discursive practice, to the other ones that are more deductive, uh, like uh, for Kla, for example, that draws a lot from Marx and Foucault in general continental philosophy. And again, um, I think uh, the challenges maybe for CDA is to bridge in the gap between the concreteness of the data and then the discussion that it, they are very abstract, right? Because what happens sometimes when I read some works is that people are always talking about ideology, ideology and power, and then this connection, like you said, Professor Defino, that connection between the real practices of real people in everyday life, it's not coming in together with this highly sophisticated philosophical debate that sometimes CDA analysts are having. And I agree with you in this sense, that we should take in more seriously this kind of critique. Some, of, some of example, uh, examples of CDA works that try to fight for social justice. My own, of course, I know I have two minutes. <laughs> uh, my own, of course, and um, trying to see how black migrants are represented in the Global South in a comparative study in the Brazilian newspapers and the South African uh, newspapers. And I'll to try to, to bring some enlightenment to, to the journalist area and then to see what is necessary for us to treat more fairly those migrants. What, what do you need to do? What are we doing wrong? If we're doing some, if I, you know, stumble some kind of good practices, which I have found so far, I, I should refer them as, you know, inspirational models for other, uh, for other practices as well. But so far, I would say that the dark side is unfortunately winning. 
Um, there are other words also from other parts, not just uh, in the global south, but in other parts of the world, like the word by Kiguru that was CTA to analyze how unrepresented uh, people in the courts in Kenya really suffer because the judges don't understand that the ability, uh, the linguistic abilities, you know, the pragmatic abilities of, of, of that is necessary in law, sometimes, I mean, most of the times, works against those people that don't have a lawyer. And the Kenyan law allows a person to represent himself or herself. It's interesting, in Brazil, for example, that is not possible. You cannot represent yourself. If you do, can't pay a lawyer, you will be obliged to have a public lawyer. It doesn't matter. Of course, he will have like thousands of cases, and he won't do it, you know, the representation well. But because maybe other uh, systems of justice recognize that the pragmatic, the linguistic, not just the legalese, is necessary to fight that. And maybe the, uh, the, in the legal studies, we should uh, educate lawyers to realize the importance of the linguistic training and how languages can be a really powerful tool, not just for, for, for those who have money to pay good lawyers, but also for, for those who don't, right? And there are other works as well, multi-semiotic analysis, uh, the analysis of tattooing, for example, coming from Western uh, Cape University, how women use their own bodies as the ultimate frontier to fight for their rights and to say, okay, you don't let me speak in the church, you don't let me speak in school, you don't let me speak in some spaces that are privileged for men, so I will use my body to speak against inequality. And they're analyzing that as well. Several examples from CDA uh, influencing the way the curriculums are designed in Brazil, especially coming from the University of Brasilia. It, really good examples how uh, in the federal district in Brazil education has been transformed thanks to the actions of CDA analysts and among any others. But to finish, to sum it all, that's my conclusion, there are some questions that bother me as a CDA analyst coming from the global south. The first one is try to respond to some of our critics, right? So how far should CDA practitioners go to address critiques concerning uh, concerns about the issues of systematic methodological designs, their replicability, and ability to consistently bring together higher concepts and the concreteness of the data and the practices? Some people say, you know, CDA is not really replicable. You guys need more systematic, more rigor in your analysis because how can we reproduce the things that you guys do? It's so specific and entrenched in the social context, right? And maybe we should address the, this kind of critique because it's necessary. It's okay to be challenged, to be critiqued, to be criticized, right? That's how we grow. And how productive and organically responsive is it for us to fight injustice with the tools created by the members of the very institutions that somehow foster them? You see how CDA was born by the hands of, you know, white European male. Can we really fight injustice by using that? Like Lewis Gordon said, can you bring the master's house down with the same tools of the master? I'm not sure about that. Uh, and we most of CGAs in Global South always be doomed to apply theoretical and methodological instruments coming from the Global North. Can we develop our own tools? And what kind of reference of critique are we using in CDA? Is it possible to bring references for critique coming from Pan-Africanism and Latin American philosophy and African humanism, something that is not Eurocentric? That's a question that I don't know how to answer, but maybe you can help me with that. Thanks.